Well, it is great to be with you tonight, and uh, we're excited. Uh, I'm excited to start a new series of lessons with you tonight. I'm looking forward to sharing those with you uh, throughout uh, the next few weeks. Uh, so from around age nine-ish to the time that I was 12 or 13, if you had asked me what my favorite music was, my favorite band or uh, artist or album, what do you think I would have said? Any guesses? It's a fun question. You've got to have some guesses, right? Favorite music of my childhood? Anybody? Anybody want to throw something out there? I couldn't hear them if you made your guesses, but I know that you have them in your head. And if you, yep, Jerry's got one. What was it? The Beatles. <laughs> Jerry, who's looking at the monitor at the next slide, has guessed the Beatles. Uh, that would be correct. Uh, from around age nine-ish, I moved on from my phase of uh, the Space Jam soundtrack and the Tarzan soundtrack and the weird Al Yankovic parody of uh, Don McLean's American Pie, Mr. Anakin guy. Uh, I put those behind me, and I went into a more mature phase of my uh, music-enjoying life, and I became a fan of these guys, the Beatles, right here. Uh, I was a little late to the party uh, in the 1990s to be a huge fan of the Beatles, uh, but one year for Christmas, uh, I received a little CD-ROM uh, of this album here called One, and that is an album that has every single one of the number one hits uh, that the Beatles ever had. Do we have any other fellow Beatles fans here as well? So, so this album has all of the, the big ones, you know, Can't Buy Me Love and Eight Days a Week and Eleanor Rigby and Penny Lane and Yellow Submarine and Hey Jude, and I just loved, uh, you could ask my poor mom, uh, I listened to that CD through so many times in the car. Uh, when my family went to London, I dragged them over to the, uh, you know, the famous crosswalk on Abbey Road where they had the little album cover, and we walked across that just because I had to go across that. When I was in third grade and I was uh, auditioning for the third grade musical, I sang the song Hard Day's Night a cappella with much gusto. Uh, for Amy James, our uh, elementary school uh, music teacher. Uh, please don't ask her about that. Uh, but I was just a huge Beatles fan for that period of my life. And I remember the day, uh, it was at the start of sixth grade, we had a new student in class. His name was Holland Henley. And I learned that Holland Henley was also a fan of the Beatles, I think he said it in one of those, like, you know how at the start of school they have the get to know you questions and such? And he, he mentioned that as one of his get to know you things. And I found him in the hallway after class. I was so excited. I was asking him all the questions. You're like, what is your favorite song? Like, why do you like the Beatles so much? And he listed off two or three of his favorite songs. And I just, I just froze. I was, was, was he mistaken? Like, what are these songs that he's talking about? You know, on Revolver, he said, their best album. You haven't heard of Revolver? Oh, what about Rubber Soul? What about Sgt. Pepper? You haven't heard of any of these albums? And meanwhile, my face is turning as red as that album cover because I'm realizing that although I knew all of the super big number one hits, there was so much more about the Beatles that I had no idea about in the world. And so I bought some CDs, did my research. You know, some of that later stuff gets kind of weird. Kind of a head scratcher there. I liked some of it. And what else I found was that there was a lot of really great music that had been there all along that I just had never given any real attention to. I'd never ventured into it. And before I go any further, I have some things that I want you to hear. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. 
For there is no one righteous, not one. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. You see, at just the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will someone die for a righteous person. Perhaps for a good person, someone might dare to die. But God demonstrates his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. What then shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may abound? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, we might walk in newness of life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Nevertheless, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. What a wretched man I am. But thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And if we are children of God, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing to the glory to be revealed in us. For we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, We'll be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. Okay, question I'd like for you to answer. What have I just shared with you? What was that? Anybody know? That was Romans, a whole lot of it, right? Uh, I would have also accepted the gospel because a lot of what is shared in those passages of the book of Romans is just like part and parcel with what God has done to rescue humanity from the problem we all had when we all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And yet God loved us in spite of that, gave his son before we'd done anything about it. And even though we still struggle, we can have hope because... Of Jesus. And I could see in your faces that much of what I just read was just like, yeah, know that stuff. Would you agree with that? Like things I was reading there, that's stuff we know. That's good stuff there. We're starting a series on Romans tonight. And in this series, we are not going to cover any of that. None of that. That's not exactly true. Uh, because the truths that are in those verses, I mean, it's, it's the good news. That covers everything in the letter we call Romans. It's kind of like if Romans were a house, that's the foundation. And there's not a room or a closet or a place you could go in the house that is the letter to the Romans where you wouldn't be standing on that foundation. So in that sense, we are going to be talking every single week about those things that I just read to you and shared with you. But when it comes to those verses and chapters that 
Probably for some of you, maybe I might have mentioned a favorite verse of yours in the whole Bible, maybe. For me, Romans chapter 5 is one of those places. When it comes to those verses and chapters, that is not what this series is for. I'm calling this series The Rest of Romans. Because there's more to discover in this letter. Now, to be clear, I'm not implying that you or any of us are like uh, elementary school Beatles fan me, where you knew all the hits and knew absolutely nothing about the rest of it. We talk about these things for sure. But if you're like me, uh, chapters 1 through 8 of Romans and chapter 12 of Romans, those are like the greatest hits that get you know, just stuck in your head, and you know those really well, and they're some of the ones that are just closest to my heart. Meanwhile, there's some other parts of this letter that maybe we don't spend as much time with, and they can be kind of a head-scratcher sometimes. Sometimes they can be kind of difficult, So, for example, uh, chapters 9 through 11 uh, are about the plan of God regarding Israel and the Gentiles. And it's just really hard to understand what Paul is saying in those chapters. I still struggle to to grasp fully what the argument is there, but we're going to work on it together in this series. I remember a time when I was in high school... Uh, And a friend of mine uh, who, you know, he had some Christian background, but not a lot. Somehow, some way ended up in this passage. And he came over to my house and we were sitting in the living room and he was talking about Romans 9 through 11 and saying, you know, this doesn't, this doesn't seem right. That's, that was his impression when he read those chapters and I, I had to say at the time, I was like, I, I'm, not sure I know, I'm not sure I know what this means. So there's some hard things here. Chapters 14 and 15 are not as hard to understand, but they're very difficult to apply to our lives today. In those chapters, you, you get some of these disputed matters. That, you know, Paul uses the phrase matters of opinion about some of these things of related to food or related to special days. And for some, these are just kind of like arbitrary things. And for others, it's something more serious than that. Well, how do we deal with that in a way that doesn't make it to where we just take that passage and make it say whatever we want it to say? That's a hard thing, but it's probably worth talking about. Chapter 13 is hard to live by because that's the one that talks about respect toward and submission to uh, authorities. And we're going to talk about who the authorities were in Rome and how difficult that must have been. And you know that in our world today, respect for authorities is not exactly the strong suit of our culture. Uh, And it's a challenging thing. So we're going to talk about that. Romans chapter 16 is names and names and more names. And you might look at a chapter like that and say, well, what am I supposed to get from this part? So there are reasons why this is uh, the rest of Romans, as I've called it. Uh, Some of this is not the easiest stuff to work with. But I think there's so much here. There's so much here to discover. There really is. Because if the heart of Romans, like the greatest hits of Romans, uh, is the gospel of what God has done, then I would say the so-called rest of Romans gives us a window into people trying to live by the gospel in their real lives, in the real world. That's what these passages allow us to talk about and and work with here. We see some of the struggles that early Christians had in taking and applying and living by what they have been taught and believed and baptized in and, and received from Paul. They're struggling with how to reconcile that with the day to day. And some of the things that they deal with are still really relevant today. 
So if these are the chapters that kind of give us a glimpse into the real life of trying to live by these words, then the goal of this series is to make it real for us too. Spend some time really thinking about applying those greatest things we love about Romans to these more difficult parts. And I think that there's no better place to start with that than in chapter 15. Uh, I just want to spend a few moments, you know, most of what we've done tonight is a little bit introductory for this series, but I do want to, to turn to, to Romans chapter 15 for just a minute. Um, verses 4 through 6, I'd like to, to spend a moment there with you. These two verses really help us to get at that reason why, why we're doing this. And they also give us this, this, this great challenge uh, to take with us tonight. This great point of reflection for our lives as we try to take what we believe and apply it in our lives. Here's a little check-in point, a little challenge for this week. So Romans 15, verses 4 through 6, say these words. I will say about these words that this is one really powerful, true statement, followed by one really heartfelt prayer. So here's the statement. For everything that was written in the past, talking about the scriptures, was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had so that with one mind and with one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's just take a moment and think about what Paul is saying and what Paul is praying in these three verses. So what is Paul saying first? I think what Paul is saying in that first verse is that the word of God that we study and that we listen to and that we learn and try to apply in our daily lives, that word of God has a purpose. It has a purpose in our lives. And that purpose is twofold. First, it exists to teach us. That's what verse 4 says. God's word, what was written in the past, teaches us. And actually what it says is that it's not just parts of it that are useful to us to teach us. Everything that was written was written to teach us. And that's part of the reason why for this series, you know, if there are parts of this letter that might take a little more effort and a little more digging to figure out how it's teaching us, that's what we're going to try to do here in trust that God's word has something to say. That God's word has a purpose and that purpose is to teach us. It's part of the reason for this series. And beyond that, God's word has a purpose of not just teaching us, but also God's word is a, it's a blessing to us. It not only gives us information, but it is a source of life. So some of the words that are used about what God's scriptures bring here in this verse through the endurance taught in the scriptures. We learn endurance here. And the encouragement they provide. These can uplift us. Through those things, we might have hope. Endurance, encouragement, and hope. We've got a lot of good reasons to open our ears and listen to this message. So that's what Paul is saying. Now let's look at what Paul is praying. He's praying that God is going to be at work in our lives. 
praying that God is going to be at work in the Roman Christians' lives, in, in all of his followers' lives, to make us more like Christ. What he says is that we might have the same attitude, or the attitude of mind, I think is how this translation puts it, the same attitude of mind that Christ Jesus had. And that might sound kind of familiar to you if you remember Philippians chapter 2 says almost exactly the same thing when it says, have the same mind in you as was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, gave all that up, humbled himself, and God raised him up to his glory. Here, Paul is praying that very same thing. Have the same attitude of mind that was in Christ Jesus. And have it in a way that makes a difference toward each other. That's the second thing. It is toward each other or in our relationships with other people that we really need to have this mindset, this attitude. One thing we're going to find as we look at the rest of Romans, where the gospel is being made real in people's lives, is that it has a lot to do with the struggle of dealing with one another. It's dealing with that person who's in authority, who does not honor God. It's dealing with the person you don't see eye to eye with. It's dealing with that person who causes trouble and strife in your life. It's dealing with that person who doesn't look or act like you. Paul's prayer is that these Christians in Rome will have the mindset of Christ as they deal with those very things. And that's why we have this too, in a lot of ways. It's why we also need the rest of Romans. Because I think we also face many of those same challenges of dealing with those same kinds of relationships every single day. So what would God have us to do? God would have us to listen to his word, that we might be taught by it, that we might be blessed by it. And God wants to work in our lives and in our hearts to make us like Christ, so that when we deal with the people in our lives, we can together with one voice bring glory to God the Father and our Lord and Jesus Christ. So as we go down this road together on Wednesday nights, this is our starting point. And as we close tonight, I want to ask you just to take a moment and reflect on what Paul was saying and what Paul was praying. And how does it relate to you tonight? So with the first one, it could be good to ask ourselves, am I listening to God's word in my life? Am I allowing it to teach me? And this is a difficult thing, but am I striving as best I can, not just to listen to some, but to listen to it? Not just my favorite places, but maybe the places I might need to grow. Maybe I need to be listening to those. Uh, maybe I need to wrestle with the challenging things. Or maybe at times in my life I need to seek out the encouraging things. But am I listening to and remembering that everything he's given us is for a good purpose? Am I taking hold of the blessings, the endurance, the encouragement, the hope that God gives to us? Am I striving to be like Christ in the way that I deal with the other person in my life? Is Christ's mindset the one that I bring with me when it's a difficult person? Am I allowing God to work in me so that I can be like him in a way that blesses others to do the same? Well, maybe one of those things is a, a good, simple challenge for you to take with you tonight and into this week. Uh, and I hope that as we continue in this series that we'll continue to be challenged with things like that that speak to us where we are.
Maybe tonight where you are is that you might need encouragement from your brothers and sisters. And maybe somebody needs some prayers tonight. Uh, perhaps somebody, you know, maybe even somebody on our live stream tonight might need to uh, respond to the gospel. We've heard a lot of that good news as we think about the heart of this letter. And what a difference it makes that God went to those great lengths for our sake. However you may be called or challenged, I would invite you to consider how you can respond while we stand, while we sing.